and welcome to another review. Today we're going to go ahead and review a fragrance from the house of Herbolario. We're talking about Meharis. Now Meha Reese, I'm not sure what year this was actually released in, but I heard about this fragrance just because so many people had been talking about it, and it's one that I had missed. I actually got a big decant of it sent to me from one of my subscribers, Rob. Thanks man, much appreciated. And it was supposed to be, and this is supposed to be, a Musk Lavajour clone. Something that smells so similar to Musk Lavajour. And for those of you who don't know, Musk Lavajour is one of my favorite fragrances. I love it. Um, I'll explain the reasons why, but you know, I just absolutely love that fragrance. So I was really excited to try this fragrance out, and it was supposed to be a cheaper clone. Now, the bottle, the bottle, as you can see, is a very simple design, and it's available really in one size, a 50 milliliter, which is going to run you about $45 retail. You may have a little bit of trouble looking for it or finding it, but do some searching around and you should be able to find this bottle for sale uh, for that price or even cheaper than you've seen there, all right? So let's go ahead and get right into the actual fragrance itself. Now, the notes of the fragrance are listed on the screen. The main takeaway from this one is that, yes, this really does smell like a Musk Ravageur clone. The main notes that I'm getting from this are vanilla, cinnamon, I'm getting musk, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting clove. Now, I know this fragrance does not have clove listed in the notes, but I'm really getting this clove-like scent that really, I guess it's, it's got to be within some composition with the notes that's giving it that scent. But that clove scent is really what's the big thing of what's reminding me of Musk Ravageur. Now, Musk Ravageur is a very aggressive fragrance, right? Now, Maha Reese, on the other hand, if I'm to compare the two, Maha Reese is a more wearable, it's a smoother version of Musk Ravageur. So it almost takes all of the negative qualities that I heard about Musk Ravageur and it you know, rounds them out and it gets rid of them, if you will. So that aggressive opening that you hear uh, about Musk Ravageur and the fact that it's just close, 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 this one, it's no, nowhere near as powerful. That aggressive opening goes away after about five minutes and it becomes something creamy, powdery, silky smooth, if you will. And so it easily rounds that kind of scent out. Overall, you know, after, as the kind of fragrance kind of, you know, develops on your skin, you start to get a little, get, get a little bit more of a cinnamon, vanilla, and it becomes this creamy, creamy, powdery smell. That dry down that you experience with Musk Ravageur is really what this scent kind of experiences throughout the entire life of it. And even with the dry down, the dry down is still a little bit more tempered with that, uh, with the vanilla doesn't smell as sweet, the clove isn't as prominent, the cinnamon, the cinnamon is a little bit more died down and subdued. Now, even though I say subdued, it still lasts a good amount on your skin. It lasts eight to 12 hours on my skin easy, it is there on your screen. It has a good amount of projection. Nowhere near the projection of Musk Ravageur, but this is all you really need. You just need, really need it to be about you and not necessarily a scent that goes out and punches people in the face, right? So I think this is a good date night fragrance and it's a good uh, night out fragrance. It's a fragrance that you can wear out to the bars and everything like that and uh, it'll be perfectly fine with it. Maharis is also a good fall and winter fragrance. It's a fragrance that's a little bit more suited towards the, uh, I guess you could say, more mature individual. I still think that even with this composition, it's really not meant for, uh, you know, a, a, less, a less mature person. Um, Compliment-wise, this didn't get any unsolicited compliments except for one time. There was one time that I was actually wearing this one. It was after a work event and I was at a bar and I got a compliment from one of the waiters that, were, what, that was there. So I, I say um, it's not really unsolicited because this waiter knows me and she made a point to comment about it when I was, uh, you know, getting a drink. And so, uh, you know, I kind of um, put it on the fence there with compliments. But when people actually smelled it, they had very positive things to say about this. They thought that it was smooth. They thought that it was, um, you know, very sensual. They thought that it was a good fragrance that you can wear out on a date. That was the impression that they were getting from this. So round and round, you know, people really love this scent. So if I'm going to go ahead and give this fragrance a rating, I give this fragrance a rating a 10 out of 10. This is what fragrance should really be about. Now, why am I giving it a 10 out of 10? One, I love the smell. I think the smell is still very unique, even though it's, 
Yes, it smells like Moscow Vajor. It's still unique in the world of fragrances, if you will. You're not really going to find much else that smells like this. Uh, to the price point, $45 for this, even at the maximum price, that's a steal. It's a steal for this fragrance, hands down. Um, yeah, uh, again, comparing it to Moscow Vajor, Moscow Vajor retails over $200. I forgot what the exact amount was, but it's, you know, this scent is retailing for $45. It's just like, you know, you're not going to find a better deal on a fragrance for this. It has good projection, and it has good staying power, it has good longevity, it has, um, you know, it's, I wouldn't say, sorry, I was going to say something about the accessibility, but the accessibility is the only thing that I would kind of give it a knock on, but, you know, if you look around, you'll be able to find this set for purchase. Uh, so just give it a shot on that. Um, if I'm going to compare this to Muscat Vajor and ask you whether or not do you th which one should you buy, I will almost 100% of the time say buy Maharis, buy this fragrance rather than Muscat Vajor because you're getting the same thing for a fraction of the price, uh, or you're getting something very similar for a fraction of the price. Why may you want Muscat Vajor? And even if I was supposed to pose the same question, would I buy Muscat Vajor or Maharis again? I actually probably, that would be debatable, because I still prefer Moscow Vajor over Maharis. Why? Well, Moscow Vajor, to me, it symbolizes something that's aggressive. I like it because of its aggressiveness. I like it because of the fact that it's an in-your-face fragrance, that it'll punch you, that it, that it is just out there. That's my bold fragrance. Maharis, again, I think is a hands-down better fragrance, but for my purposes, it may not suit it as much. But again, if I'm just comparing the two, I say go with Maharis. It's, uh, it's a better buy. You'll probably like it a little bit better, uh, if not much more, than you like Moscow Vajor. So this is a definite steal, if you will. Get your hands on it if you don't have Moscow Vajor or if you were hankering for it but didn't want to shell out the money. All right? So that's pretty much it. Thank you, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. Have you smelled Maharis? Uh, what do you think? Does it smell like Moscow Vajor? Am I off my rocker here? Let me know what you think, all right? Thank you guys, take care of yourselves, and you guys have a great day.